Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Montezuma, Kansas. It's time for the girls' action. First for South Central, Scott Howell going to lead the way for them. The Timberwolves come into the year at 11-7. and seven. Mia Alexander, the 5'4 junior, is averaging over 13 points a night for the Timberwolves. And on the other side for South Gray, John Wall in his first year of coaching, the South Gray girls squad only has one loss. And they've got maybe the best player in the spa league in Vi Helm. The 5'9 senior averages almost 17 a night. It's a rematch from last year that South Central beat South Gray by 10, but the Rebels shot less than 30% from the floor. Oh, baby, let's do it. And it's all brought to you by MJE and United. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Montezuma High School. I'm Cameron Burney. This is Tim Ritzke. It's uh, construction night here, and Coach, you're about a week behind on yeah, the... It was uh, Hawaiian week last week, so <laughs> I'm about a week behind, but that's kind of how I operate. So, <laughs> so here tonight for South Central, Mia Alexander going to be the what the offense kind of revolves around for South Central. And uh, coming in uh, as the leading scorer on the year for the Timberwolves. Yeah, good shooter, uh, got some quickness, and uh, the youngest of uh, four girls in that family, and uh, you know, just a, a pretty good all-around player. I say, yeah, you would have coached several of them, and then on the other side for South Gray, it feels like every time we do it, it's by Helm, but that's where the offense starts. Right. Uh, I consider Vi to be uh, just a the most talented pure athlete in the league and uh, her game is slash and uh, if she gets you on her hip you're beat last year these two teams matched up and it was actually a 10 point win for south central 40 to 30 by helm they held her to two points and the team was nine for 37 from the floor 24 percent yeah it's pretty hard to win like that uh I had an assistant coach at one time that always told me, Coach, when you get to the end of the game, if your free throw percentage and field goal percentage aren't over 100 added together, you're probably in trouble. So we're set to get it underway here in Montezuma on senior night here for South Gray. South Gray is going to start with it, that J.C. Deegis. We'll give it off this Jacelyn Hughes camp. We'll now come up top with it, Allie Reed. Deegis back underneath, by Helm, jumper to start, no good. Rebound track down in the corner. And that'll be Leeper will look to bring it up. We'll find now Alexander. Leeper's had a good season for a freshman. Uh, she's added a lot to their team. Alexander will give it over with it now, that Molly Murphy. Leeper inside, jumper, no good. Still lose. Helm comes away with it, and the Rebels looking to run. Bye to the corner. Allie Reed up top. Kylie Stapleton, probably the one girl for South Gray you don't want to give a ton of space to. Yeah, you can't let her get her feet set. If her feet get set and she's squared to the goal. South Central will bring it across here. That Cassidy Lee. Lee will give it to Murphy in the corner. Molly's jumper, front iron, no good. Rebound Stapleton. And then it ends up to Deegis. I do think that South Central will be able to handle uh, South Gray's pressure for the most part, which will keep them in the game. Uh, their, their issue will be, can they score enough? 
We'll go Vihelm with it at the high post. Vi, it's going to be a foul. I believe it's on the floor here. 6.30 to go just underway here in this first quarter in Montezuma. Heels camp set to trigger it and will do so. Top of the key, catch, fire, front iron, no good. And the rebound pulled down by Alexander. Mia, the junior averaging just over 13 points a night. We'll give it over, Leeper. Hand it off now, Molly Murphy looking inside. That one thrown away, but tracked down by Izzy Hackney. Leeper. We'll give it to Murphy in the corner. We'll come back up top. In the corner, Alexander is going to be fouled driving to the bucket. That's going to be the first foul on Vihelm. Five fifty-five to go here in the first quarter. Just getting underway in Montezuma. It'll be a big thing tonight. Some of the games we've watched, Helm has gotten foul trouble. And a three-second in the lane call will give it. Back to South Gray here. Yeah, last time, the last couple of times we've right. seen him, she's been in foul trouble. Right. Most of the time, when you try to teach players that most fouls are caused by being out of position. Helm will skip it to the corner, catch and fire. D just no good. Helm the rebound, and she's fouled, uh, and she'll shoot a pair of free throws here. Or no, excuse me, it's going to be on the floor. The foul was on Hackney, it's her first. The lob it in, that Allie Reed coming downhill. No good. Alexander comes out of the pack with it, Mia. With 5.28 to go, we'll go over now. Hackney traveled. We've gone over that several times, uh, especially for young players. If you want to eliminate that travel when you're taking off on your dribble, get your knees bent and get down. If you're standing up straight, you've got a pretty good chance of getting called for a travel. He just will give it over by Helm. By all the way to the bucket. She got a half step on Murphy and took it all the way. Just what we talked about in the open. If she uh, if she's even with you, you're beat. You're either going to foul or she's going to get a good shot. So they will get it into Hackney. They will come over now at Cassidy Lee. That one through the hands of Alexander and out of bounds. Deegis will come over Stapleton. She'll fire, no good. Rebound off of Hackney, she'll track it down. And now Leeper will look to bring it up. Staple didn't, didn't have quite as much time as she did the shot before to get, uh, get her feet set. And give it to Hackney with it now, Izzy. South Central still looking for their buzz first bucket. That one thrown away, Deegis. JC dumps it underneath, Heels camp, rolled it in. And it's a seven nothing start here for South Gray coach and it's got a chance to get bigger. No good from Deegis. And that's going to be a tie-up. If South Central's going to stay in the game, one thing they can't do is turn the ball over. So a timeout taken here. And uh, I say just a little bit sloppy with the basketball the last couple of possessions for, yeah. for South Central. A uh, long cross-court pass is a uh, kiss of death against the uh, press, especially if the other team's got some quickness. And uh, South Gray there, a 7 nothing start on senior night. It's it's worked pretty well for Coach Wall so far. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they could have scored two off that live ball turnover, missed the layup. But if you, uh, if you turn the ball over and let South Gray get in transition, then uh, you're asking for big trouble. <laughs> so it doesn't just say running Rebels on the – scoreboard or not on the scoreboard but on where you where you right. check in at the scores table right. for for no reason so they're playing a one two one one press on a south date. central has numbers now and then murphy wanted to throw it back side it wasn't there and then uh, the back foot slid 
Dejus will bring it up. The trap comes out and they go to the corner. Stapleton, that one got through to Heels Camp and ends up by Helm from 10 feet is money. Vi's got her second bucket of the night. That one's stolen away. Helm ends up with it. Vi dumps it backside. Stapleton, the extra pass to Allie Reed. No good. Hules Camp will shoot a pair. Yeah, live ball turnovers are a kiss of death against uh, South Gray. The last turnover, uh, or next to last turnover by South Central. Again, young players, when you catch the ball, your first move has got to be to square yourself to your own goal. That one rattles in for Reed. Or excuse me, that's Hills Camp at the line. Rattles right. in for her. She's got three points tonight. And in a way, South Central's lucky that South Gray hasn't scored more. It's an 11-0 start here for South Gray. Leaper, no good. Rebound it. Heels, or excuse me, rebound Stapleton. D just looking to run. Uh, Helm was open down the floor, but they didn't see her. She'll take it to the rim and score again. Vi's got six. Alexander. Dump it Murphy back outside Hackney. Alexander fires off the back iron, no good. Rebound and a second chance coming here for the Timberwolves. Lee with it in the corner. She'll fire. Too hard. And I thought maybe Leeper was going to have a third chance at it. Instead, now South Gray in transition. Alexander slapped it away. It ends up, though, underneath. And that's going to be off of Heels Camp, out of bounds. Now we'll bring Regan Mears into the ballgame. First time today for her, the 5'3 junior that averages about six points a night. It also brings in Emma Jellison for South Central. She's got it there. And then Emily Hardy out there as well now with it. Leaper. will try to step through, fouled on the shot, and it'll be two free throws coming in South Central. Still looking for their first points with 12 30, with 2.37 to go in the first quarter. Now, kind of what we talked about at the opening of the game. Uh, for the most part, I thought South Central would be able to handle uh, the pressure of the press, but would they be able to score then in their half-court set? And that's haunted them so far in this game. Say so, so far the answer to that question is no. That's correct. If you, uh, if you give up live ball turnovers against the press, it usually ends in a backboard shot. And if you give up backboard shots in basketball, you're asking for trouble. Vi Helm will bring it up here. Vi dumped it underneath. What a pass. Heels camp no good, though. Tapped the board right to Mears, and she scored. Alexander, that one slapped right back out of bounds. As a general rule against the press, you don't want to get the ball deep in the in the corners because the baseline and the sideline are just like another defensive player. And so you're going to get trapped anyway by two players. You, you don't want to make it four unless you absolutely <laughs> have to. So a timeout taken here by Coach Howell and South Central right now just, just kind of looking for some answers here in this, this yeah. first quarter. Yeah. And if you're, uh, if you're a little hesitant against the press or a little nervous against the press, uh, turnovers are soon to follow. So uh, South Gray here in this one, a 15-1 to 1 start for them. And it's been four different girls, By Helm, Jason Hillscamp, Kylie Stapleton, and then Regan Mears have all scored. And then for South Central, Cashton Leeper, one of two from the free throw line. Alexander, give it to Hardy. They'll come up top with it now. Leaper, Lee thought about it. That one, Helm went for the steal, laid out, still loose. Alexander comes away with it and then threw it right into the arms of Stapleton, but it's back to Lee. And that's going to be a travel. I thought it was. I thought she dragged her back foot about three yeah. feet. <laughs> you only got one pivot foot. <laughs> At least in Kansas, anyway, it's yeah. not legal to change. 
South Central gone to a zone here, 2-3 zone. Go inside, heels camp, the runner, no good. Lincoln Gosen's in the ball game for South, Cent or for South Gray here. So against the 2-3, what are you trying to do, coach? Uh, weakness of a 2-3 is the uh, elbow of the lane where the free throw and sideline of the lane meet. Vi Helm just banked in a three. I'm not sure she called that. But <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. That's true. They all count. Banks open late, Montezuma. You know, you know, it's one of those things when you're coaching, you can't believe it when it's the other team. When one of yours hits it, then it's great. Alex. South Central's got to get back. Helm looking to run, Vi. Dumps it off at the last second. It'll end up to Stapleton. She'll fire from 14 and knock it down. And it's a dream start on senior night for South Gray so far. A 20 to 1 start. I, don't, I thought coming in, South Gray was the better team. I didn't think they were 19 points better in no, the first quarter. No. The turnovers have been the issue for South Central. And then uh, when they get in the half court, Who's going to score? That's that's the big question. And South Central is uh, basically a perimeter type team. So Quinn Jantz into the ball game first time tonight for South Gray. It also brings D J C Dejus back into the game along with Allie Reed. Forty seconds remain here in the uh, first quarter. Reed inside, back out. Now Jantz. Deegis. Right there is the weakness of the 2-3 zone, right in that area. Stapleton thought about it. Instead, they'll go inside. Allie Reed will kick it out. They'll work it around. Stapleton fires in and out. No good. Rebound slapped, and it ends up to Murphy. One other disadvantage of playing zone is it's much harder to block out in a zone than it is in man. Hardy will give it over. Alexander. Or excuse me, that was Hackney, and that one thrown away looking for Murphy. And 5.7 to go. South Gray will get it back. Cross-court pass, flat cross-court pass. Uh, man, I hated if one of my teams threw a flat cross-court pass. Deegis will give it over. She gets it back. Extra pass. Jantz back to her. They didn't get a shot off. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter, 20-1. to 1. It's a dream start for South Gray. I'm not sure really anybody saw this one. It coming this bad this early. Four different girls have scored for South Gray. By Helms got nine in the first quarter. KCMC Sports is coming back after this. It's all brought to you by MJ and United. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. The second quarter just getting ready to start. 20 points in the first quarter for South Gray. South Central coach just one point in that first quarter. Yeah, South Central was hesitant uh, against the press. Uh, didn't attack the press very well, and then that affected them when they got in the half court. One Hardy. We'll get it ahead now, Hackney. And South Central coach hasn't, I mean, they've taken a few shots, but a lot of turnovers lot in that first turnovers. quarter. Always tried to teach my teams that every time you turn the ball over, there's one point for the other team. And that's usually about the way it works out. There's a good shot. Didn't you just get it down. A little too hard off the back rim, and now South Gray will bring it ahead. He just with it. We'll try to force it inside. It ends up to Stapleton. She fires that one off the mark. But D just the long rebound. Mears, no good. Alexander the rebound. Mia. 
minute gone by here in the second quarter. I'm Cameron Burney, that's Tim Ritzke. South Bay State in man. Hardy, that one was thrown right into the arm. Stapleton put him up and it yeah. pretty much just bounced off of her. So there are two good ways to attack a zone. One is drive the gap and bring two people together. That one, uh, Pagney poked it free. She'll take it inside. Layup's good for Izzy. And that is the first field goal of the ball game for South Central. Yeah. Seven and a half minutes uh, to get that first field goal down. That's usually a rough way to win. Yeah, doesn't work out well. He just will give it over. Stapleton, no good. That's going to go over the top of the backboard. So we're, we were talking, there's two good ways to attack a zone. If the ball handler drives between two people and brings two together, now you have four and they only got three. And the other one is the use of the pass fake. Because if you'll watch people play zone, most of them look directly at the ball. Hackney, or excuse me, Alexander with it, trapped in the corner. We'll try that cross-court pass. Uh, Allie Reed de deflected it. We'll save it right underneath. D just no good. That slapped out of bounds. I think it's going to stay on this end of the floor, and it will. And another turnover against the press. So when I watch film on a team, if they played zone, zone, you play man-to-man -man on the person in your area. You don't guard an area. You guard a man in your area. And you can always tell a well-coached team because that's what they do. South Gray moving the ball around very well right now. Allie Reed, no good. The putback is good. That Gwyn Jantz for the first time tonight. Lee cut off. That one's going to be a foul on Mears, I believe. By Helm along with Lakin Gosen and Jason Hills Camp will all check back into the ball game. 22 to three in the second quarter here. That's a, a big hole to draw out, a uh, hole to get yourself out of against a good team. Number one thing for South Central, they just have to get good shots. And they got to get some stops on the other end. And a look for somebody. It's going to be a five count. Alexander found Hackney, but a half count too late. Yeah. He just will bring it up, gives it over by Helm now to the corner of that Lake and Gosen. Right there is the weakness of the zone. They're going to lead to a foul on South Central. It's going to be on Cassidy Lee. Into the corner, Gosen, catch, fire, bottoms. A nice shot by Gosen. The 5'5 sophomore that averages uh, just about three a night drilled that one. And when you get a, a big lead like this, all of a sudden the bucket gets really big for, yeah. the, for the home yeah. team. When you're on the other end, it looks like a thimble. <laughs> Gosen went down, uh, that runner no good. Gosen holding her knee. And the official's going to stop play. This is a always, always uh, scary when you have a non-contact injury. Let's say she just kind of got trapped over there in the mid-court line. And the other thing, sometimes you can't help it, just the position you get put in. But the one thing you never want to do is come down straight-legged. Yeah. So 4.49 to go here. They're going to come 10 to Lake and Ghost, and we'll, we'll take a quick break here. KCMC Sports is coming back right after this.
Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. Lakin Gosen was helped off the floor and it will take a seat on the far end of the bench. And don't want to speculate, but the, just kind of the way she came down, that didn't look great, Coach. No, no it always uh, is very alarming as a parent or a coach when you have a non-contact injury. The 5'5 five, five sophomore knocked down the three the possession prior. And it was that left knee they were tending to. Yeah. Leaper with it here, 4.31 to go in the first half. They will come outside Hackney. And so now if you're at South Gray here and you just saw one of your one of your girls go down, what do you what do you have to tell your girls to, hey, re refocus here, we get, there's a, the task at hand. Yeah, I mean, basically you play for them. And uh, any good team I had, uh, you know, they played for each other. They didn't play for me or South Central or. That one goes down for Alexander, her first bucket of the night. Usually when you have that, you have a player-directed team. They know what you expect uh, in terms of everything, fundamentals, effort, etc., And they hold each other accountable. If it's a coach-directed team and you're having to tell them, usually that doesn't end well. Alexander inside. Mia, no good, but he'll shoot two. Good drive. Basically forced a foul there. Well, Alexander, a pair of free throws coming here for the junior. Just a 57% free throw shooter on the year is Mia. First one, nothing but net though. Regan Mears back into the ball game here. As JCD just will check out. Second one's good as well. Just over halfway through this second quarter here. Hules Camp with it. We'll give it over now, Stapleton. Kylie's got five tonight, Mears with it. Back to Stapleton. Kylie inside, back out. Mears thought about the deep one, got Alexander Light on her feet. The runner, no good. Rebound pulled down by Hackney. I do think the zones have been more effective for South Central than, than the man was. What a tough shot from Hackney and off the side of the backboard out of bounds. Yeah. 3.07 to go here in the first half. So South Gray's got to really concentrate getting the ball where Ali Reed is now. They're at the, the ball side elbow. They get it to Vi Helm, and she's going to be fouled as she came through the lane. Now it's always difficult when you have a teammate get hurt. It's uh, deflating for your players. Mears banked in another one. Well, that's two of those tonight. So South, South Grace banked two of them in. Quickly comes a Leaper. Leaper. It's going to be a foul on Stapleton. And sometimes when you're banking in threes, it's just your night. Yeah. Uh, you know, we... There's nights when uh, you just shake your head, and there's other nights you can't believe the good fortune that your team has, <laughs> and uh, you never know. But honestly, you know, playoff time's coming up here pretty quick, and having some good fortune uh, plays a big part in how far you go. I mean, you gotta be playing well at the time, you gotta have a good squad, you gotta be healthy, and then you gotta have a little luck. And it's all going to go just right in the right. every night. Right, because there, there are no mulligans. Side no good. Vi Helm the rebound, looking to run. Vi all the way to the bucket with the left hand. No, but she'll shoot two. I think we talked about it in the league tournament, but any time that you have a player that can dribble down the floor faster than the other players can run, I always called those difference makers. And uh, if you're fortunate enough to coach some of them uh, you know they uh, they're the ones that usually uh, are the straw that stirs the drink by helm now in double figures tonight with 10 points mm -hmm. 
And we'll get set for her second one here. On the way, got it. Good free throw. Nothing but the bottom of the net that time for her. I think Vi's shot has improved. Uh, so the last year I coached, she would have been a sophomore. I think her shot has improved quite a bit since then. Reed will split. Everybody dumped it backside. Jantz, no good. Allie Reed lost it out of bounds. But going to stay on this end of the floor here. Minute 44 to go in the first half. Into the corner, catch and fire. Stapleton no good. By Helm the board, the stick back is good. You notice in the zone, nobody blocked Helm out. She just ran straight from the perimeter and got a rebound. And a full timeout taken here by Coach Howell, his third one of the ball game already. KCMC Sports is coming back right after this. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. A minute 32 remains here in the first half. And at a 25-point lead for South Gray. Hardy will give it over. Leaper coming inside, cashed into the bucket, and she'll score. Good drive. She's got three points tonight. She had the only point in the first quarter for South Central. Fuels camp with it. Now up top, Deegis. Back to her. We go inside Stapleton and she's fouled. It's going to be on Hardy. So South Central has one foul to give here before halftime. Allie Reed will check back into the ball game. Hills Camp to trigger it in. We'll lob it up top Stapleton. Allie Reed with it. Back to Stapleton. Underneath, heels camp, no good. Rebound tap, she got it back. Wanted to throw it back outside. We'll do so, Mears from 10. Rolled in. I'm not sure that shot was ever more than about 10 feet and two inches above the. I uh, know. <laughs> that was a line drive. Alexander with it with 25 seconds to go in the first half. Hardy. Leaper. Back to Alexander. Mia with 13 seconds remaining. Alexander had it poached free. Mears went for the steal. It's still loose. It'll be a tie up. It'll keep it on this end of the floor. Six seconds left. And it may not make any difference in tonight's ball game, but uh, even the hustle there and getting a tie up, that means that uh, unless something strange happens here, uh, your team's going to get the ball start the second half. Yep. And close games, that can make a lot of difference. So Alexander with it will give it over Hardy. She'll fire. No good. Rebound pulled down. And the first half is over. A 25-point lead here in the first half. Coach, any thoughts on this first half? Well, South Central was just too tentative. Uh, the press made him tentative, and then they were tentative in their half-court offense, and that hurt them and plagued them really the whole first half. Uh, you know, most ball games, if you just ask yourself, which team's getting the better shots? Yep, okay. South, South Gray. No doubt. A 25-point lead for the Rebels. I did an interview 
with Scott Goodhart, the director of officials. That's coming up right now on KCMC Sports, second half after this. So, Scott, you've been an official for 17 years. You were the NFHS Boys Basketball Official of the Year in 2014. Now, as you are the director of officials, what does your day-to-day look like? So, my day-to-day varies from, you know, day-to-day. But I can get a call from an official up in Bird City. I can get a call from an official in Pittsburgh. Maybe they're talking about scenarios. Maybe we're looking at things like, hey, this play occurred. Did we do it right? So... But there's a lot of things is trying to, you know, you're, you're thinking down the road. So, you know, for example, we're already getting ready for baseball, softball with registration packets going out. People aren't thinking about that because we're in the middle of basketball season. But that's kind of, you're, you're always thinking down the road of what are things we can be doing and things like that. So, Some people probably don't realize the scope that it takes that we're here during basketball season of there's seven classes of basketball that are all happening on a Tuesday or Friday night. How many officials does it take to cover the entire state, and what's the scope of that like? So let's see here. We've got about 1,500 registered officials, and you figure you have three officials per varsity game per night. Um, A lot of those officials are working a doubleheader, a girls and boys game. And then you've got your urban areas like Kansas City. You may have a set of officials that only work the girls game, and they'll have another set for the boys game. So it's, it's unique across the state, but at the same time, each classification is very important. Each class and each kid matters, so there's a lot of a lot of different moving parts with it, but the same, they all have their own uniqueness with it, for sure. So there's obviously been a couple of rule changes this year, the big one being one-and-ones that are no longer a thing, and then now you only inbound in certain places once you cross midcourt. Just talk about how that has changed the game in your eyes and like what you're seeing from it from an official standpoint. So, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the consistency side of it is allowing that any time we have a foul that occurs, we're putting it in one of four spots, so that gives the coaches more opportunities to set up for maybe – a side inbounds, a baseline inbounds, whatever the case may be. I was kind of part of the old school people of like, oh, I like the one and one. But at the same time, I think the change of resetting the, the fouls each quarter has allowed teams to play aggressively for four quarters. But also it's held us as officials accountable to have to officiate for four quarters. So, Has there been any big changes or anything you've noticed with it? The end of game situation stuff, maybe not shooting as many free throws? or Oh, it depends on each game, honestly. But really, I think it's made the game better because more intense. Um, you know, there's some times that, you know, allows those teams that do want to press and do those things to do that for those four quarters. But I think it's made good games better, honestly. So I, I really liked it. Um, it's taken a little bit to get used to, but I think our officials have done a pretty good job of, of getting used to the new rules for this year. So. Yeah. What was the, the biggest challenge that you saw from an official standpoint? Maybe not so much on the one-and-ones, but having to relearn inbounded in maybe the four spots. Or... I think it was just a lot of driving at home. Um, Kyle Dobrowski did a nice job with that in his rules meetings. Um, our administrators go and do rules meetings each place, and he did a really good job of, of kind of hitting at home of saying of different scenarios. Now, this one will be out of bounds anywhere because the ball went out of bounds, but this one's a foul or a violation. So you're going to go to this closest, one of these four designated throwing spots. So that's been good. Um, We're still learning on that. That's the beauty of officiating. And every time you step on the mat, the pitch, the floor, you try to learn something new each time. So that's, that's kind of one of the things we try to put into our officials' heads is like, even though you've officiated for 40 years, you can still learn something new every time you step on the floor. Yeah. And then everybody's going to learn something new next year with the implementation of the trial run of the shot clock. Just if you want to talk about how that kind of came about and what your thoughts are on it. Well, I, I'm again, I'm, I'm kind of on those both sides. I see that the, the good of the shot clock, but I also see that there'll be some challenges with it too um, from an official standpoint. But um, you know, I think it's one of those things that's going to change the game a little bit. And we as officials have to be mindful of that. We have to understand that, hey, we've got two clocks going, a shot clock and a game clock. So it's going to make us more aware about, you know, time management, things like that, to kind of make more where we're on point with. Um, I do see some great opportunities just with officiating courses taking on throughout the state and even for our sub-varsity middle school officials. That might be a way that we can get them more involved with the game doing the shot clock stuff. Officials are only as good sometimes as their scores table is. So if we've got a great clock operator, a great table, that makes a game so much smoother. So I will say that that will be a big piece of it too. It's not just the officials on the floor, but the officials part of the uh, – 
table. So your guys' job obviously is not easy. Like I, I would not want to do it. What's something for the fans that think it's easy and it's like it's it's not that easy. Well, I've always encouraged people that you know that cheer for officials or give us pointers of saying you guys can come and try it because I was the same way. I'm in Ransom, Kansas as a high school kid, and I told the principal, I said, "Your guys' officials are not very good." <laughs> so the guy goes, "Hey, if you think you can do better, come try it." So that's what I would tell people. I was like, "It's not that easy, but if you are willing and want to try, do it. Please do it because officiating is a great fraternity. Like we are going to all work together to give the best thing we can for kids." Like, that's what I tell people. It's such a unique group because we are trying to do the best thing for kids, and we want to see each other succeed. So there's a big part of that that we want to help each other with that. But, again, I tell people, it's like, if you want to do it, I can get you all the games in the world you want, or I know the people. We need officials at all parts of the state for all levels. So, But, really, just trying it would be the biggest thing. But understand, too, we're human, all right? Officials are human. The players are human. The coaches are human. The officials are human. For the people that want to become an official, What process do they need to do to go through that to, hey, I want to try this, but how do I get into it? So the the best way I would tell you to go is go to our Keisha website, so KSHSAA.org. There's a tab about becoming an official over there. It has a lot of links and information from the apparel, where to get your stuff, to when the meetings are, to how to register. So June 1st is when you would be able to be registered for the 24-25 year. So it's too late for this year, but there's also opportunities coming forward in the future. Um, one thing that we do ask that officials have to be registered with us to work varsity contest. However, if you're a person that's willing to want to try it now, you can contact any local middle school, high school recreation, and you can work sub varsity or junior high games. And for officials that are already registered and that have been officiating, whether they're new or they've been around for 30 years, sit, you talk about getting better all the time. What are some steps that they can take to continue to get better? Well, there's a lot of off-season opportunities that we do. Uh, one of the things is camps. Um, there are camps in the summertime that we, are great opportunities. There's area meetings that go on. Those are great things. That's, those are things you have to do to become postseason eligible, but they're welcome to any official that wants to go to it and kind of learn more about the game. Um, you know, a lot of it now in today's time, a lot of it's film study. You know, if you can go back and see your guys' network or CNFHS or go back on Huddle and see those plays and just seeing reps, that's a big part of it. Because I promise you, there's nobody harder on officials than ourselves. If we kick a call, we are going to go back and watch it and say, you know what, I'm going to learn from it. You know, we're not trying to go out there and, and make bad calls, but we are human. We make bad calls. We make mistakes. You see it in the pros. These guys, it happens every day. So, Again, I think going back to that humanizing officials type thing. So, We have a great program. Um, we're working with a group out of Indiana called Ref Reps. It's an online officiating curriculum. Anywhere from small schools to large schools across the state that are utilizing it. Uh, that's one thing I would encourage schools to do. If you don't have an officiating course, this is a great way to get started. Um, you know, it can tie in with about any class schedule you have, whether it be club, organization, or something you can do with your PE course. There's a lot of good information in there with that. But, you know, my biggest goal coming into this role has been recruiting officials, training officials, finding mentors for those officials, and then retaining officials. So key piece for us to keep officials is after year three, because we studies have shown that once, once they get to year three, they're usually going to stick with it more. So, you know, those officials that may be first or second year not sure about it, stick with it, please. It'll get better. I mean, the first year is the hardest because you hear all the noises from the stands and you're not sure about that stuff. So I would encourage you to find a mentor, get with those people and say, hey, would you mind watching me? Give me some feedback. See my thoughts. You know, see what I did wrong. What did I do right? Give me some constructive criticism, you know. But I really encourage them to stay with it. And I hope people do. The other side of it, I would say, if you tried it and you said it's not for me, then hopefully you have a different perspective out of officiating. Yeah. Well, thanks again for, for coming and doing this. And good luck, not just with your new gig, but also still, because you do still officiate. I do. Yeah, I'm on my way to Dodge City now for TOC. So, But yeah, thank you for having me. You guys got a great thing going here. Um, yeah, thank you.
Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. The second half is just starting here in Montezuma. I'm Cameron Bernie, Tim Ritzke alongside of me. And 34 to nine at the end of the first half. By Helm inside, jumper goes down for. Good shot. And uh, if you remember, that tie up with six seconds left just ended up in two points. Yep. Murphy with it, she'll fire off the back iron, no good. Stapleton, that slapped out of bounds, gonna go back to South Gray. South Central's uh, back to playing man again. Now they look like they're in a 1-3-1 zone. Reed will come up ahead, Vi Helm with it. And come inside, back out, Vi, downhill, floater's good. She's got 17 tonight. Averages right at that a night yeah. on the year already there. She's got two good shots to open the second half here, both about uh, six or eight feet from the goal. Hackney, no good. Rebound, leaper, and she'll shoot a pair. So the foul at that time on by Helm. Free throw, rolls in. Leaper's got four points here tonight. On the way, got it. Well, if you got five points, with six, uh, 6.56 to left to go in the third quarter, and you've got half of your team's points, <laughs> basically that's not a that's good night. It's a rough night. It's a rough night. Nice Helm dumped it underneath. No good from Allie Reed. The second chance, and she'll shoot two. Foul's going to be on Hackney. Good pass by Helm. Had a good shot. Passed it to Reed for a better shot. The swish says it all. Yeah. When you're coaching, that's a sweet sound. <laughs> <laughs> if it's clunk. <laughs> <laughs> so Hackney will bring it up here. Outside Alexander with it. Mia will drive, kick it to the corner. Lee thought about it from the corner. She'll cross over on Stapleton inside. Rejected by Kylie. It ends up right into the arms of Leaper, though. Cashton. We'll hand it off, Cassidy Lee. Dribbled on the uh, sideline out of bounds. You know, as a small player, a perimeter player, if you drive the baseline and you end up underneath the goal, a lot of bad things can happen. Deegis with it, we'll give it to Heels Camp. We'll come back by Helm, that one thrown underneath their legs and it's gonna roll all the way out of bounds. With 5.58 to go here in the third quarter. Alexander will get it to the corner. Hackney up top with it. Now Leaper thought about it. They'll run Alexander to the corner. She will fire. It's going to come up short. And then that one tracked down. Deegis inside. No good. Vi Helm came flying in for the rebound. And all kinds of bodies hit the floor. It's going to go to South Central. Good hustle by Helm. She came flying in, able to pull the rebound down, and then couldn't the corral it. I say the chaos that ensued. Yeah. Murphy will go to the corner with it now. Leaper, Cashton, inside, no good. It was a nice move, just unable to finish. That's going to be a tie-up. It will give it. To South Gray here with 5.23 to go in the third quarter. I don't remember a jump ball since the opening possession. Just the one right before. Uh, right that's before what I half. thought because South Gray had the opening possession. Uh -huh. Okay, they've corrected it. Okay, South so Central, it will yeah. yeah. So it stays with South Central here. Alexander, 5.20 to go. That happens at the beginning of a game or be, uh, beginning of the second half a lot of times. 
because there's no jump ball, sometimes the scores forget to uh, Flip switch arrow. that arrow. So you always want your assistant to be watching that. I mean, the way the score is now, uh, that's not important. But in some games, it is important. And some of those games are coming up in the next three or four weeks. Yeah. The jumper rattled out no good for Leeper. And Vihelm dribbled into JCD just to give it to her. Up ahead, Stapleton underneath. Heels camp off the glass. Nice pass. This one's got six. Lee fires from downtown, and it rolled home for her. I was going to say, if that rolled out, that was going to be exactly how the night's gone All for right, South Central. Exactly. She had a good look. Hills Camp will give it to Vi Helm. 4.17 to go. Vi to the bucket. No good. Rebound Leaper. I always thought that when you're playing man defense, you should never give up a set shot, a stand-up shot. Alexander halfway through this third quarter. Hackney fires off the mark. She knew it as soon as she let it fly. She was chasing after it. He'll come up ahead, Stapleton. Kylie underneath. Allie Reed no good. Murphy corralled and then a foul. I can't remember if that's two on Helm or three. I think, I think it's, it's two. Unless she yep, got one this just her second. Yeah. But you never want your players to get a foul 80 feet from the goal. So one of your rules usually as a coach is don't, don't foul people where they can't score. Well, I'm guessing you could give uh, most high school players all night and they're not going to score from the opposite baseline. Yeah. <laughs> And when the rebound was pulled down, Emma Jealous ended up on the deck after it. It's a tie-up. It will give it to South Gray. South Central's lucky there. South Gray had a grill at the other end of the floor. No safety for uh, South Central. Say Gwyn Jantz uh, was uh, 60 yeah. feet in front of everybody. She had a run out. Stapleton drilled it. And uh, South Central may be a little fortunate there. That could have been an and one as the yeah. box out didn't give her any room to come down. No. Hardy into the corner. Cassidy Lee in and out. No good. Slapped out of bounds. Going to stay on this end of the floor, I believe. Let's hear that last three by Stapleton. They're going to say this goes now to. Because now I'm confused. Oh, we had a timeout on the floor? I'm not sure who called that. I was watching the. Uh what the officials were deciding on the out-of-bounds call. So it's a full timeout South Gray took it. What did they end okay. up deciding on the out-of-bounds play? Who, who's got, uh, do you I don't know? know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how they're going to decide that. <laughs> I think it's going to stay with South Central, but okay. I'm not sure. Yep, it is. Just got word there. Grant Newhold standing it down underneath the bucket. Landon Eiler, your producer today. Kenzie Waybright also here as... Uh, there, Grant trying to hide. So we, we threw him in. The one and only Ryland Tedder is on his way. And then it, Kenzie Waybright with us up top as well. Landon Eilert, your producer. I'm Cameron Burney. That's it, Tim Ritzke. And it, it's a 30-point game here, yeah. Coach. We, we got a – not what I was expecting. No, I mean, uh, on paper, South Gray has a better team. But I thought the game would be competitive. I was going to say, I thought S South Gray would be – 10 to 12 points right. better than South Central, not not 19 in the first quarter and 30 with 3.05 right. to go in the third quarter. This uh, South Central started off tentative, and when your team starts like that, sometimes it's really hard to get them uh, out of that mindset. Jellison in the middle, and it's going to be a foul, and she will shoot two. Three oh four to go here in the third quarter. The foul was on Jance, her first foul. Jellison, the five seven junior, averages a point and uh, just over two and a half rebounds a night for Coach Howell's squad. Got 
good. So that's now the fifth different girl to score for South Central, but just 15 points to show for it so far tonight. Right. Mears with it. We'll go inside by Helm. Not going to be a reach-in foul. So on the last play, Helm, Helm cut into the post area from the weak side. When you're in man and that person cuts from weak side to ball side, you cannot let them go over your face. You have to body check them, jam them, whatever you want to call it. Mears, no good. The foul, by the way, it was on Mia Alexander. It was her second. Leaper dumped it underneath. A nice pass. Shot no good, though. And then Vi Helm pulls the rebound down. Vi looking to run for the Rebels. We'll go to the left hand, and it was slapped free. I think maybe she was going to try to dump it back side to Mears. Alexander. Give it back outside to Hardy. Will fire. Runner banked in. That's Emily's first points of the night. She hit a couple of pretty big shots for you. Yeah, she did when she was a freshman and, and uh, as a sophomore. So it was the one as a sophomore in the in this building? Was that where your guys' yeah. substate was, was here? Right. Yeah, I remember the one in, in Greensburg in yeah. substate to, to beat Buckland in overtime. I, we had uh, a, after you'd had two plays yeah. that you didn't draw up, the, oh. the, the freshman bailed you out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Made you look really smart. I know. <laughs> That's pretty hard to do. <laughs> Reed's jumper, no good. Rebound, D just pulls it down. Gwen Jantz. Go to the corner, Allie Reed. Into good pass. Middle. Jantz, no good. He'll scamp the rebound and she'll shoot two. One thing you can't do is just let people run in from the perimeter like that and get a rebound. So when that shot goes up, you better get a body on whoever you're guarding. Always, uh, in my mind, those are things you can control. Every player's gonna miss shots. Every player's gonna get caught traveling. That's part of the game. But not blocking out, not talking, those things that you control, if you don't do those, then most generally, you're going to end up, I always called it, that seat over by me as the motivator. <laughs> and, uh, the idea was to motivate him to do the things you can control in a game. Hardy will dump it underneath it with it. Jellison now. Alexander. Mia fires from 17. Connects. Chance with it here. A minute 19 to go, third quarter. Mears will give it over. Deegis underneath now. Ali Reed is going to shoot two. So the same play right there where Reed cuts into the ball side post. If they get in front of you, you're at their mercy. And a good player, if they get the ball in there, either they're going to get a good shot or you're going to foul them, which is just what happened. That was the... Uh, Third foul, by the way, on Emily Hardy. A minute 12 to go in the third quarter. 46-19 your score here. Ellie Reed, no good. Jance the rebound, though. And then it's going to be a tie-up. Still a good hustle by uh, Jance there. Or was it Deegis? Which one? I thought it was Jantz came in for the... Okay. That's what I thought. I could I be wrong. I have been wrong once before. Maybe twice. Just, just uh, don't ask my mother. That's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me each quarter, not just each night. <laughs> Mears with it. Yasmin Cervantes said to check in at the next whistle, which may be right here. Or maybe not. Or maybe still. Yep. So the jump ball will get it to South Gray. And Cervantes, the 5'10 junior, will check into the ball game. 38 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Heels camp set to trigger it in. A 27-point lead for the Rebels on senior night here. Yep. They've had a good night. They were set up to try to get it inside to Cervantes. 
Instead, they'll work it around Hillscamp. Now Dejus back to Hillscamp. Cervantes up top, now over Dejus. One dribble in, fires, no good. Rebound ripped away underneath by Hillscamp. 13 seconds on the game clock. And then a travel. Yeah, we'll give it back to uh, South Central. I was going to say we were we were at South Grade 3 away there from Turbo Clock in the fourth quarter. Right. Hardy will give it over. Leaper will dribble. Fire. Front iron. No good. Rebound pulled down. Hills Camp not going to throw the three-quarter heave up. And that will send us to the fourth quarter. 46-19 to 19 is your score here after three. A 27-point lead for South Gray on senior night. Everything has gone right for the Rebels tonight. 17 from Vihelm, eight apiece from Kylie Stapleton and Jason Hillscamp. KCMC Sports is coming back after this. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. The fourth quarter is just getting ready to start, and it's a night for South Gray that almost everything has gone right as uh, Lincoln Gosen went down in the second quarter with a with a knee injury, and we, we just hope she's she's all right. Yeah, you never want to see anybody get hurt. Uh, you know, knee injuries are a little more prevalent in girls basketball, and you always worry. Uh, if you were coaching gals, uh, it's just uh, amazing that, you know, people think that if you're going to get injured, it's going to be a rat. Or, but a lot of times, uh, knee injuries are non-contact, and it always scares you. South Central will start the fourth quarter with it here. Hardy had that one slapped free. It ends up back outside. The runner, no good from Hackney. But Stapleton, the rebound, looking to run. Kylie will go to the corner. Dejus up top with it now by Helm. Inside, back out. South Gray's moved the ball very well yeah. tonight, Coach. They do a good job of that. Nice pass. It's going to be a foul before the pass. Beautiful pass there from Stapleton to Reed. So Jance will trigger it in. They left Dejus open in the corner. She'll fire, no good. Rebound by Helm in the stick back. 19 for the senior. Same thing. One thing about Helm, you don't get a body on her. Hardy, jumper comes up short. Rebound Stapleton and uh, one basket here for South Gray and will be in turbo clock in the fourth yep. quarter, which was not what anybody coming in here tonight thought the, the outcome would be. That one's on the floor. Reed, no good. Jance taps it out of bounds. It's going to go to South Central. Six thirty-nine to go here. Alexander will walk it up. Mia across to the left hand, looking to get baseline. We'll go to Hardy in the corner with it. Emily, back outside now, Cassidy Lee. Murphy inside, rejected by Vi Helm. Vi, now a two on one. Helm faked the pass, took it inside, and she'll shoot a pair. She almost. Got a three-point play there. That was a tough shot. 
And say the block on one end and then all the way to the other. Right. When you when you have a player that can get down the floor that fast, that's a tremendous advantage. Emily Hardy fouled out. That was her fifth foul. Helmet, two free throws coming. And that will put us in what Grant Newhold calls turbo clock. So as soon as the uh, clock starts, it, it won't stop again for the next 6-12 unless, say, an official timeout or a right. or an actual timeout. So D just checks out here along with Allie Reed and Kylie Stapleton. If you ever had a running clock in the fourth quarter, it better be your team. Yeah, <laughs> you, you would hope so. Yeah. Helm, free throw. Helm knocks them both down. 21 for her tonight, and it's a 31-point uh, lead for the Rebels. And the double dribble on Hackney there. And it's just been that kind of night for the Timberwolves. Yep. So Mears will bring it up here, the 5'3 junior. We'll give it over now. Heelskamp, one of only two seniors on the roster for South Gray. They're both on the floor, Heelskamp and Vihelm. That one stolen away. It's going to be a tie-up. Or no, it's going to be a foul. It's going to be a foul on Gwyn Jantz. And Alexander will now bring it up. Murphy will go underneath. Leaper got it. So the same thing on this end of the floor. That person cuts weak side to strong side. If you don't beat them to the spot they're going to, you're at their mercy. Helm with it. Bye. Inside. Good. I'm not real sure how that shot went in. I'm not. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah, that shot hit. It might have hit the bottom side of the rim. Yeah, the bottom side <laughs> of the rim and crawled over the top. Lee fires, no good, misses all, out of bounds. It was kind of like uh, caddying for my dad playing golf. His golf swing looked like he was killing snakes, and yet he always collected money at the end of the day. He said one thing you want to know about sports is they never ask you how, just how many. <laughs> and I've always remembered that. Chaseland Hillscamp checked out there for the final time on this floor the way that Coach Wall was acting. Alexander's three goes down. And Kylie Stapleton said to check in, and I would guess the next uh, substitution, the, the crowd will be just a little bit louder as Vi Helm most likely coming off the floor for the final time. That one on the floor. Leaper came away with it. And it always a much uh, easier time to leave the floor when you're up yes. 30 plus yes. in the fourth quarter. And I think yeah. Vihelm getting ready to check out of this one. And I would guess there's an ovation coming. So Stapleton will check in. 3.30 to go in the fourth quarter. And for the final time, as a Lady Rebel on this floor, Vi will check out. She's, she's had a heck of a career and a, a yeah. chance to add to it in the next uh, month or so. I always enjoyed watching her play unless we were playing them. <laughs> that was one of the players you didn't like to coach right. against? Right. Alexander, no good. I say, and you just had to deal with her as a sophomore. Yeah. <laughs> She's a good player then. Uh, you know, she's one of the best in the league now. Yeah, without a doubt. Murphy, no good. Second one for Murphy is good. The issue for South Central, uh, both boys and girls, is that South Gray's in their substate. Yeah. So don't get me started on that, Coach, right, especially on the guys' side. I, I've been there. 
You just shake your head. We, we, we can set it up in the four, five, and six A levels to try to get the eight best teams to state. I, I don't know why we can't do it at the one, two, and three A level. If you get me started, uh, <laughs> you probably have to. Uh, I, I agree. Landon, with Landon might have the, the beeper to get going. <laughs> Yasmin Cervantes that time on the drop step scores. Cassidy Lee with it. That's going to be a double dribble. So out there for South Central now, uh, Chanel Blundell, along with Remy Martin and Ellie Murphy. Now Emma Jellison out there as well. And then for South Gray, Katie Foskell out there, Yasmin Cervantes. Zweingart, is that Foskell with it? Gwyn Jantz, and then Regan Mears as well. Jantz will give it over, that's Zweigart. 61 seconds to go here in this one. Tell you what, the guys game coming up, number one in two teams in the state. That it's, as that three goes down for Regan Mears, she's got 10 points tonight, but that, that guys game, top two teams in the state, it's the equivalent of a what would be a state title game. Yeah. And we're going to play. And like it I said, the, they're both in the same substate, yeah. and uh, you know, unfortunately, I've can't never be a understood state game. that. Uh, if your idea is to get the eight best teams there, why are number one and two in the same substate? Right. You know, and even in when I first started coaching, and. Uh, you know, yes, there was electricity then, but <laughs> barely. Was anyway. You, did you have backboards? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you had regional and substate, and the top two teams out of each regional advanced to substate. And then I always thought that you had a pretty good chance of getting the best eight teams there. So uh, 57 to 25, and... Uh, Lee here with a chance to put one up at the buzzer. Will do so. It's off the mark. A 32-point win for South Gray on senior night here. Right. So uh, 23 for uh, Vihelm in this one. Regan Mears adds 10. Kylie Stapleton and Jason Hillscamp both add eight a piece. For the Rebels, for South Central, nine from Mia Alexander, seven from Cashton Leeper. And then Lee adds three, Hardy and Hackney, a bucket apiece. Emma Jellison just took one point here tonight for South Central. Coach, any, any final thoughts? I think they're getting ready to do senior night. If they do it now, we, we will cover it, but any final thoughts from you, Coach, uh, before this? You know, really the, the tone of the game was set in the first three or four minutes, and it never changed. Yeah. South Gray was a more aggressive team. Their press uh, created issues for South Central. South Central got tentative. And, uh, you know, when you play a really good team and you dig yourself a hole, you're asking for big trouble, and that's what happened. So what do you say we wait about 20-ish minutes and then and then cover the – top two teams in the state on the no, guys' side. Should be a really good game. Uh, two talented teams and two well-coached teams, so should be interesting. Yep. So uh, senior night's getting ready to happen. We will cover it. We'll step out for this, but the uh, coverage will continue. That's Tim Ritzke. I'm Cameron Burney. South Grace Senior Night's coming your way.
Our next senior is Joey Dyke. He is the son of Elizabeth Reimer. Joey has participated in FCA basketball and youth group for four years, track for three years, NHS for two years, and men's letter club and forensics for one year. Our next senior is Blake Fernandez. Blake is the son of Mandy, Rickson, and Chad Fernandez. Blake has participated in choir and men's ensemble for two years and basketball for one year. Our next senior is Rylan Gosen. Rylan is the son of John and Amy Gosen. Rylan has participated in youth group, football, track, and pet band for four years, and men's letter club for three years. Our next senior is Vi Helm. Vi is the daughter of Jamie Helm. Vi has participated in basketball, volleyball, track, FCCLA, K's, and Stuco for four years, women's letter club for three years, NHS and vocal for two years, and FCA cheer and band for one year. Our next senior is Cadence Hickson. Cadence is the daughter of Heather Hickson and Lorenzo and Felicia Gallegos. Cadence has participated in band, volleyball, FCCLA, SAD and youth group for four years, track and basketball for three years, choir for two years, and forensics, K's and Stuco for one year. Our next senior is Jacelyn Hulskamp. Jacelyn is the da daughter of Tom and Janet Hulskamp. Jacelyn has participated in Stuco, K's, SAD, basketball, volleyball, and track for four years, Women's Letter Club for three years, Western Kansas Career Showcase, NHS and Youth Group for two years, Cheer, and was a Victory Electric Youth Tour Delegate for one year. Our next senior is Jackson Kane. He is the son of Vince and Kendra Kane. Jackson has participated in golf, pep band, FCCLA, and Stuco for four years, men's letter club for three years, and the Rebel Ed podcast co-host, National Honor Society, Western Kansas Career Showcase, cross country, FCA, and youth group for two years. Our next senior is Dominic Martin. He is the son of Jeff and Cherry Martin. Dominic has participated in basketball, track, band, and youth group for four years, FCA and men's letter club for three years, FCCLA and cross country for two years, and football for one year. Our next senior is Max Moore. He is the son of Nathan and Michelle Moore. Max has participated in basketball, band, FCA, and youth group for four years, cross country for three years, NHS and Stuco for two years, and football and forensics for one year. Our next senior is Kaylee Moyer. She's the daughter of Rick and Jamie Moyer. Kaylee has participated in SAD, volleyball, band, FCCLA, FCA, K's, and youth group for four years, women's letter club and Stuco for three years, and NHS for two years. Our next senior is Connor Salmons. He is the son of Craig and John Lee Salmons. Connor has participated in basketball, football, track, band, youth group, FCA, FCCLA, and the class vice president for four years. He's participated in Men's Letter Club and Scholars Bowl for three years, and NHS, Stuco, and co-hosts the Rebel Ed Podcast for two years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give one more big round of applause for these seniors and all their accomplishments.
So obviously we're in the midst of Spa League right now. This all gets started when, and like on your guys' end, how do you get to where we are that this obviously does not come about in one week to, oh, hey, cool, we're playing in the arena. Right. You know, we have we have a committee um, that, that everything that goes on behind the scenes with the tournament, uh, Brandon Haynes from Mead is the, the chairman of the committee. Um, you know, so any major things that that happen go through him. He's in contact with the people at the arena and, you know, some major sponsors sometimes, but um, he's kind of the guy that designates for everybody else, you know, and, and, and split up all the duties. Um, Steph Couch from Buckland, uh, Brian Dieterding from Kiowa County, uh, Ted Brown from Ingalls, Luke Ritchie at Mineola, Joyce Apsley at Satana, Bud Valerius at South Central, and Travis Calloway at Spearville. Those are all the committee members. There's a whole crew, you yeah, guys. There's that... a whole crew. And, you know, things really ramp up um, probably three or four months ago. You know, we really got to make sure that the arena's locked in, um, sponsorship to, to cover that, setting up hospitality, um, bringing equipment such as chairs for people to sit in, uh, table workers, basketballs, warm up balls, game balls. Um, sponsorship yeah. banners, everything that makes it possible that. to get it. Yeah, taking to, care of all of that. You guys have to bring everything yep. into the arena that you use, basically. Yes, basically, um, they supply the curtain that we hang <laughs> all the sponsorship banners on, and the table, obviously. Uh, um, but a lot of it is stuff that you know different member schools bring those pieces in, uh, so that we can have that stuff available. I'm saying that all comes back to you guys as a league. It feels like as the board works really well together. That maybe something you don't always get in another league that you guys all are able to yeah, really come together. I'm, and that's one thing that we talk about, you know, amongst our our league is you know we might have some things every now and then that you know um, bumps in the road, so to speak, but. Uh, we maintain a really good relationship you know, with with each other, uh, with the league member schools and, and the admins. And, and so it makes things go a lot smoother, uh, meetings, you know, at meetings and uh, to do something like this. Yeah, so. and to do something like this, it takes the sponsorship that you guys are able to raise because obviously without them, you there's no chance of being able to, to put something on of this magnitude. Yeah, you know, this is our marquee event. I mean, you know, we have... We have other tournaments. We have other festivals where, you know, kids come together and they compete. Uh, but this is the marquee event. Um, you know, we have sponsorship throughout Southwest Kansas. Obviously, you know, each of us in, in our respective school districts, we're, we're reaching out to local businesses, um, you know, communities, even, you know, Dodge City. Obviously, they're not in our league, but, you know, we've got businesses from Dodge that, that help sponsor the tournament because it – it pulls in people. Uh, it, it really does. You know, our, our league has a pretty decent sized footprint. Um, uh, so, so yeah, that sponsorship is a major part of our league. It allows us to buy medals, uh, do league championship banners, um, you know, all those things that our student athletes and student participants are able to get. Um, a large part of that comes from the financials from this tournament. March Madness in January. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. <laughs> and it, it's cool for that, for the kids to, to get to play in a venue like the United Wireless Arena. I mean, there's obviously a state site there, yep. and so now they get to go play in that for a, for a week long. Yeah, you know, having the opportunity to go to United Wireless, to have a facility like that in southwest Kansas, um, and to have entities that are willing to help, you know, help you financially to be in there, and they want you in there. Um, it is a great experience for not only our basketball players, our cheerleaders, um, our band members, you know, uh, even, you know, just patrons to come in because, like you said, that's a state facility, uh, has been and, and, and will be. And, you know, I just think we'd be crazy not to. As long as, as, long <laughs> yeah. as we're able to, um, I think it's in our best interest to keep get, getting in that facility. Yeah, go, go play March Madness in January mm -hmm. under the lights. Mm -hmm. that, that's, there's just something cool about it to walk in there and it, it fills up and the it's small enough that it can still get loud but it's big enough that it makes everybody feel like whoa I'm I'm yeah, in a big it, venue. It, it's not like their gyms at home. Yeah. That's for sure. That's for <laughs> yeah. sure. So and then not just for the kids too but you talked about the bands and the patrons and the coaches and everything but the awards as well the big read the Marvin Hartzler the lifetime honoree and then the cheer dance at halftime mm -hmm. just to, 
more so on the awards side of it, how does that all come about to to be able to select the people that receive them? Yeah, as far as like, we'll start with the big read. We had uh, ELA teachers from across the league that are participating in the event. You know, those teachers help determine that. Those are presented to them Saturday night in between the boys and girls final. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, the Hartzler Award. That's That comes from driven by administrators from each school. You know, we try and uh, if we have a kid in our building, in our school that, you know, has, you know, overcome uh, with some perseverance and has integrity and, and those types of things that was based off of, you know, Marvin Hartzler, who was a longtime administrator at Spearville. Um, so, you know, we, we bring those to the league and, you know, it's one or two because uh, you want that, you want that to be special. And, you know, the Lifetime Honoree Awards, uh, that's something that has been around for a long time, um, and I think it's really cool. Again, that comes from each individual district. Uh, they find people in their district that have, you know, served them uh, and their students, and, uh, you know, we usually do one. Each school can do one if they want to. You know, we usually bring it before the league, and everybody says, yeah, that's okay. But, yeah, that is a really, really neat thing to do to – to get the people in each individual district that make up our Lee and be able to recognize them for the service that they've that they've provided. Yeah. Is there just anything else that I haven't asked you that you want to touch on? No, I mean this is a neat opportunity. You know, like I said, this is this is a big deal for our league. Um, it you know we try and showcase it as much as we can, and you know we not only have basketball, we have it's a cheer performance at halftime that again has been around for quite a while. <laughs> Uh, this is a long-standing tradition, and that's a that's a cool thing about this. The big read projects are out in the hallway, you know, during the week, so people can look at those. But uh, yeah, it's an exciting time for us. It is a lot of work, uh, but it's one of those things where it's worth it. It's worth it in the end, you know. When we get out of there at 10, 11 o'clock Saturday, we're we're ready to be done. But man, it's usually been a really good time, and. League basketball, are, you know, we've got some good basketball in our league. Yeah. So uh, it, it's going to be an exciting tournament. Glad it will. The Super Bowl of the Spa League. Yes, sir. <laughs> yep. Thanks again, Travis. Yep.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Montezuma. It's time for the guys game, and the winner of this one, in all essence, wins the Spa League regular season title. Bud Valerius going to lead the Timberwolves. They're 14-3 and three and the number two team in the state. And he's got a junior point guard in Jamie Sarmiento that's averaging over 10 points a night. And on the other side, it's the always dependable Mark Applegate. 785 career wins. South Gray 16-1 on the year. And he's got a senior in Dominic Martin that can shoot the lights out of any building if you give him a chance. The senior averaging just over 13 a night. It's South Central, the number two team in the state, and it's South Gray, the number one team in the state. And the winner wins the Spa League regular season title, and it's all presented by MJE and United. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Montezuma, Kansas, here for the number one and two teams in the state coming at you tonight. I'm Cameron Burney. This is Coach Ritzke. The top two teams in the state, yeah, they're in the same sub-state. The winner of this one wins the Spa League regular season title in all essence, and Coach for South Central, it all starts with Jamie Sarmiento. It does. He's, uh, he's a point guard. He relies on quickness. Uh, I think he's also going to have to score some tonight if they're going to uh, beat South Gray. Uh, he comes into this one. The junior averages just over 10 a night. He had a rough tournament in Dodge City. And uh, then uh, on the other side for South Gray, it really all revolves around the 6'2 uh, senior and Joey Dyke averaging almost 23 a night. Yeah, he, uh, you know, we were here uh, for the Mead uh, South Gray rematch, and uh, he too didn't play as well as he would have liked in the league tournament, but in the mid game, he was lights out. And he and some of the shots he hit were tough shots. Same. So, uh, you know, I think he's the toughest matchup for South Central in man. And then here comes the uh, always rowdy South Gray student section. Yep. The number one and two teams in the state in 1A Division One. And the winner, in all essence, wins the Spa League regular season title. Coach, this one should be a lot of fun. Yeah. So they will give it over Sam Moore. By the way, it's his birthday. 17. 17 years young. He will do things with the basketball that will dazzle you yeah. tonight. Max Moore cut off by Sarmiento. We'll give it off Dyke. Joey will spin, fade, fire, and connect. And if he's doing that, bu buckle up, coach. Yeah. He, he, uh, he can hit some tough shots. Sarmiento will dump it underneath. Jack Hurd to the bucket and good. He's One, the leading scorer on the year right. for South Central. One matchup that, that uh, I look forward to watching tonight is Sarmiento versus uh, Sam Moore. That one, Sarmiento stole it from Dyke. Jamie being tracked down from behind. It's on the floor. Dyke came away with it. It's going to be a tie-up. It will keep it with uh, South Gray. And uh, there you see, uh, jo or you saw Joey uh, telling his point guard, "Hey, come meet that. Come meet that pass." Yeah. We'll give it to Jack Hurd with it, top of the key. Now Sarmiento, Jamie. We'll hand it off, Ool. Gavin. Sarmiento and Sam Moore are both very, very quick players. That'll be a good matchup tonight. Cool inside will go to the corner. Prusa wraps it underneath. Howell saves it. 
Sarmiento will track it down in the corner. Corner, Jamie fires, no good. Rebound, Ool dumps it underneath. Heath Howell, yes, sir. Good start for South Central. He had a big night against Kiowa County last week. 22 points on 11 to 12 shooting. Dyke rejected by Howell. And it will go to South Central. And I wondered how that matchup would be with Howell and uh, Joey Dyke early. Yeah. Prusa will hand it off Hurd. Jack had it poked free from behind, but it ends up over. He'll get it back. He spun baseline, and he scored. And a quick four-point lead for South Central early. Martin. Ooh, I thought he was going to pull it. Dyke, Rice, fire again. He got another. That's just a tough shot. I say, he makes them look easy. Uh, I know, but that's not easy. <laughs> You know, if you're guarding him and he hits that shot, you just got to tip your cap and say, great job. Inside and a foul at two free throws coming here for JT Prusa. The 5'9 junior that averages just over seven a night, a 65% free throw shooter. And they're the uh, crossover by Dyke. And if, he, if he's hitting those, it's going to be a long night for South Central, no, no matter what else happens. Right. You know, both teams have pretty good balance in their scoring. And really all, all five score or all five people on both squads can score. Free throw rolls off that time for Prusa. He got one and two. It's a three-point lead for South Central. 525 to go first quarter. Sam Moore will go underneath. This Max will step through off the window and good. Good up and under move. Max Moore, the senior average is just four points a night. But he's one of those guys, coach, along with it, Connor Salmons, that's not going to do things on the scoreboard, but it's going to do things that maybe you don't necessarily notice in the box score. And a carry called on Sarmiento. You don't see that call in basketball much anymore. As I say, you see it once in a while, but even if guys do carry it, they don't. That's something right. they don't call very often. No. Salmons with it to Dyke now. Joey has hit two tough shots to start. That the easiest one maybe he's going to get tonight. Got a step on Howell and all the way in. As you're watching, not just some of the top talent in the league here today, but some of the top talent in the state. Sarmiento to the bucket. And maybe two of the teams that want to play the quickest of anybody. Martin, way downtown, no good. Max Moore tracks it down, Sam Moore with it now. Max hit the floor holding his head. As he will stand up there and uh, wobble it off. As that time just fell over the top there of Ool and yeah. banged his head off the floor. And so that'll give us a chance for the first time tonight to get a look at the six foot four sophomore in Gavin Wall that will also bring the ball up the floor from time to time. That'll be a good matchup between he and Jack Hurd. That one thrown, Hurd stole it. Jack being tracked down by Joey inside and good. Jack's got six points. And it back to a three-point lead here for the Timberwolves. Martin, dangerous pass. Salmons is going to be fouled by Ool. Coach Valerius didn't like it. So that's the first foul on Ool, the first foul on South Central. Sam Moore set to trigger it in here. Moore will get it in. Salmons had it stripped away. Sarmiento took it, but it ends up to Gavin Wall. No good. The follow, no. Third chance, no. But free throws. I think that's on Hal, I believe. Oh, they put it on Jack Hurd. They did? They put it on Hurd. So it's going to be Jack's first. Rutherford set to check in. Gavin Wall at the line. Two free throws coming for the sophomore. In and out, no good. A rare miss for the sophomore, an 88% free throw shooter. Just over halfway through this first quarter. It's been moving fast. Yep. 
games against good teams always that way. And it rolls in for him. He got one of two. Prusa will give it up to Sarmiento with it now. Jamie. Sarmiento looking, will come back up top, Howell. That one deflected to the corner, Jack Hurd cut off. Top of the key, Prusa, three ball, bang! I think that's been the biggest change in uh, South, uh, South Central's team as Prusa is starting to uh, score for, from the perimeter for him. Dyke, spin, fade, no good. Rebound ripped down that Jace Rutherford in the ball game for the first time tonight for the boys in black. Underneath, Rutherford hangs, fires no good. Sam Moore now to Dyke. Joey will give it back. Sam Moore looking to come downhill. Dumps it, no look that time to Dyke. Couldn't hold on to it, Rutherford. Will hand it off Prusa. Up ahead, Sarmiento. Jamie will dribble all the way around. Jack Hurd will step into it. Instead, he's going to go to the bucket, though. He faked the pass, and he'll shoot two. As he, that time, a big enough fake, even Dyke thought he threw it outside. Right. If that's on Dyke, that's two, I think. It is. So Joey now the leading scorer on the year for South Gray with two fouls. Hurd's free throw's good. He's already got seven, and Dyke will check out here frustrated. So the leading scorer on the year for Coach Applegate going to have to take a seat for at least a little while. He's an experienced player. I would assume Mark will put him back in uh, sometime in the second quarter. Hurd knocks them both down. Isaiah Jellison now in the ball game as Jack Hurd will take a break, as well does Heath Howell. Sam Moore with it now. 2.37 to go in the first quarter. Martin, the crossover, he is quick with the ball. Dom, outside Gavin Wall. Sam Moore back to Gavin Wall. He'll fire in and out. Rebound pulled down, it's gonna be a tie up. And we'll keep it on this end of the floor. And South Gray only one loss on the year, and it came in the league title game to meet. They trail by seven here early, does Coach Applegate's squad. Probably a not very familiar place for him. Wall to the bucket. And we got an official timeout. And they were looking at the back of his jersey. So is there blood on it? Oh, there is. There's a little bit of blood on the back side of that jersey. Great work by our camera crew there to come up with that. I didn't see that. And uh, so Wall. So now you've got a, a set time limit here, don't you, Coach, yes. to be able to get this cleaned you off. Know. They don't necessarily have to sub him. But I think they're going to. I think Joey Dice is going to come in. I'll tell you what they need is uh, some of that stuff in the uh, – K-State game yeah. last week that it scored on the jersey and it just instantly came out. Right. I, I don't know what that stuff is, but. Some magic potion of some kind. It is. Sarmiento quickly to the bucket. Sarmiento and Moore are both extremely quick. That's why it's going to be a good matchup. Sam Moore. So he hand it off. Martin got Sarmiento in the air. He'll look to drive inside. It's going to be a foul on Prusa. Joey Dykes back in the ball game with those two fouls here with a minute 53 to go in the first quarter. Martin will trigger it in. Sam Moore. Will cross, dumps it underneath. Max Moore off the glass. Nice pass by Sam Moore. Great yeah. assist right there. Gavin Walls walking back to the bench. He's still in zero, so they must have got the blood cleaned off. Prusa. we on the outside with it. Gavin Wall. Or, excuse me, Gavin Uhl. There you go. <laughs> Too many Gavins, coach. No, I know. That one. Jellison slaps it. It ends up to Dyke, and then Joey's fouled by Isaiah. Yeah, yeah. It's a coach. You, you never like that foul in the backcourt. 
That was kind of an accident. Sometimes when there's a scramble, that's the way it ends up. A minute 19 to go, first quarter. Coach Valerius' squad up by five on the Rebels. Head home. Sam Moore. Can come up top with it. That Max Moore now over Martin. Hurt on him. They'll go underneath Dyke to Max Moore from 16. No good. And Howell back in the ball game at 6-6. Jack Hurd with it now. 55 seconds to go first quarter. Hurd will spin inside to the bucket and good. That's a tough matchup for Dominic Martin. He's given up a lot of size and strength to Hurd. Ten points already for Jack Hurd in this one. Martin to the bucket, no good. Rebound tapped. Sarmiento came away with it. Now South Central with numbers. Jellison. South Gray did a nice job getting back. Hurd got it. He's got 12. Dyke tried to take the charge but slid over a little late. Sam Moore fires. In and out no good. And now South Central feels like the uh, team that's in control. South Gray rushing a little bit. Yeah, that's a tough shot. And a chance for a double-digit lead here in the first quarter. Sarmiento. Jamie with four. Jamie, cross, spin, stripped by Moore. Ula lost it out of bounds. And we're going to wave it off. We'll head to the second quarter. Oh, baby, what a ball game here we got so far, Coach. Yeah, you know, I think Coach Valerius has got to be happy. His team scored 22 points on the road <laughs> in the first quarter. 22 to 13, your score after one. That's Tim Ritzke. I'm Cameron Burney. It's the, in all essence, regular season league title game. The number one and two teams in the state. And it's South Central by nine after one. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. A nine-point lead for South Central here at the end of the first quarter, and they will start with the basketball. They will go over with it now, Hurd. Sarmiento, Jamie will cross. Sarmiento lost it. He'll get it back. 7.45 to go just underway here in the second quarter. Inside out. Ool to the corner. Jack Hurd. Bang! Oh, he's playing outstanding here early. 15 already for him. 15 of their 25. 15 of their 25. He's outscored South Gray by himself. Yeah. It's a tough matchup. That's what we talked about. It's a really tough matchup for Martin. They got the mismatch. Uh, Heath Howell on Sam Moore. That's going to be a reach-in foul. I don't know if that's on Howell or Sarmiento. That's got to be on Howell, I think. I believe that just his... Uh, no, or no, they called on Sarmiento. No. It's his first. I thought it was going to be the first on either guy. Martin got some space. He was Short. fading away, though. Sam Moore comes down with the rebound. And then it was uh, poked free. I think he tried to throw it to Gavin Wall, cutting through the lane. The one thing I'd say in the, uh, <clears throat> what's happened in the ballgame so far, South Central's offense has, has been very efficient. They're creating good shots, moving the ball pretty well. Full to the bucket and good. Gavin's first points of the night. Martin. Max Moore will give it over Sam. Dumps it underneath. Max Moore is denied by Howell. And then, Ma then Sam Moore is denied. And it's going to be a foul on Max Moore. Wow, South Central coach right now. Now, uh, you can tell South Central started the game with a lot of purpose. I mean, both teams know the other teams in their sub-state. And yes, the league title's important, don't get me wrong. But that sub-state final on a Saturday night is what it's all about. I'll tell you what, how about we go to it? Yeah. 
And they, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to assume they'll be the two teams because about the time you do that, it doesn't work out that way. But right now, South Central's taking it to South Grove pretty good. A timeout by Coach Applegate and the South Central faithful on their feet. 16-point lead, and it's a 7-0 run to start the second quarter here for Coach Valerius' squad. Uh, you know, South Central's offense has been aggressive. They're, they're attacking. They're taking it to South Gray. Uh, Hurd has had an outstanding start to the ball game, and, and uh, you know, he's a sophomore. And I think we talked about it in the league tournament that I'm not sure he knows what he can do yet. Now you're, you're starting to see it a little bit, yeah. uh, what I was referring to. Yeah. And once he gets it figured out, he's, he's going to be a load. Yeah, he, is. he already is. Yeah. I mean, 15 points on the number one team in the state with a minute 50 gone by in the second quarter. That, yeah. There's not very many guys that can do that. Especially when on, they're on the road. Yes. In a hostile environment. Yeah. It, in South Gray, that – Fires, wall, connects. That's a big one there for the sophomore. There's a lot of people here even, uh, not just on the far side, but behind us as well. Some of the South Gray faithful happen to sit over on the top side of your screen. Heard inside back out. That Creed Leaper will go to the corner. Uhl. Leaper with it, 5.32 to go at second quarter. Sarmiento. We'll go to work on Sam Moore, gets the screen, wanted to dump it underneath, wasn't there. We'll come back out to Uhl. Dumps it underneath, he Powell to the bucket, foul. It's gonna be the first, I believe, on Gavin Wall, it is. And two free throws coming here for Heath Powell. Just a 41% free throw shooter on the year. On the way, no good. Howell averages just over eight points a night. In Prusa and Sarmiento, South Central has two extremely quick guards. Free throw good from Howell, he's got five. A 14 point lead, I cannot hardly believe I'm looking at that for South Central. Well, South Gray struggled to get really good looks. South Central's man defense has been very aggressive. Is there another turnover forced? Prusa slapped it and it ends up to Jack Hurd. So you saw the difference next, what we talked about in the first game. That time the defender did not allow Martin to get to the spot. He beat him there. Russo will come up top, Howell to the corner. Jack Hurd will drive on Salmons inside. Jack's got another. 17, and a travel called on Sam Moore. The South Central faithful getting rowdy, coach. Yeah. Well, South Central's off to a great start. They say they have doubled up now, South Gray. That's the whole idea is to put some doubt, put some doubt in the other team. That's going to be a foul on Howell, going to be an illegal screen. That's the first on Heath Howell. Coach Valerius got an explanation, didn't, didn't seem too upset with the, no. whatever he was told. Well, both teams only have two team fouls, so. Wall fires, got another! Must be a luxury to have six foot four that can shoot it from 23 feet. Uh -huh. Prusa. Sarmiento inside. We'll step through and a foul on South Gray. 4.09 to go here in the second quarter of this one. It's on Gavin Wall, and that's now his second. So two for him, two for Joey Dyke for South Gray. Nobody by my count for South Central has more than one. Sarmiento underneath, Sam Moore got it and hands it off that Winfrey, handed it to and now Martin will bring it up. Up ahead, Gavin Wall traveled with it. The shot was partially blocked anyway. Mm -hmm. 
the other thing that's happened here, you know, Dyke got in foul trouble. And yep. he's the ringleader for South Gray. Say so he's been quiet, sitting on the bench on the top side of your screen. Bruce, a shot rejected. He got it back. He'll kick it to the corner. Ool, no good. Howell came flying in and scored. He's got seven. South Central is really quick in their man defense. Salmons will dump it off. Sam Moore inside, rejected by Jack Hurd. And Coach Blair is saying, slow it down now. Sarmiento inside out. Jack Hurd, no good. That would have given him 20 for the day. He stole it. And then that's going to be a tie up. It will give it to South Gray. And now it, here comes the ringleader back into the ballgame, Joey yeah. Dyke. I think Sarmiento got shaken up a little bit in that scrum. So he's sitting on the bench with a towel covering yeah. his nose and yeah. mouth area. So he will check out. Joey Dyke's back in for South Gray. And he's got it. Joey started us off tonight. They'll skip it to the corner and too far. As I thought maybe he drugged the back foot before he threw that one away. Yeah. 15 point lead here for the Timberwolves. Now with Sarmiento, you see they're being talked to by Bud Valerius. Being checked out. Jellison. We'll hand it off. Cool. Crosses, lost it off of his knee. It's on the deck. It's going to be a tie-up. It will keep it on this end of the floor, though. Two thirty-seven to go. First half. A fifteen-point lead for the number two team in the state. Jellison. They will go all the way to the corner with it. Now Hurd. Jack's got 17 tonight. Jellison spins. Forced one up. No good. Martin pulled the rebound down. Jellison a little slow to get up. Will it chase the play back down now? Martin behind the back. Fires. No good. And I'll tell you what, all it's going to take is one of those to go in for the South Gray faithful to come alive behind us. Wall forced that one up. No good. A lot of... Uh, South Gray shots are sped up just a little bit. And, uh, you know, when you're not used to being behind. Wolf, the runner, a lot of contact, no whistle. Jack Hurd, the board, back up and in. 19 in the first half. He's matched South Gray by himself. Dyke to the bucket. No good. Gavin Wall, the rebound and the stick back. Gavin's in double figures now with 11. It was a nine-point ball game at the end of the first quarter. It got to 16 very quickly, and it's just kind of stayed at that for much of the second quarter. Yeah. This next minute, 17, feels pretty big. That one stolen away. Sam Moore hit the deck. South Grace crowd's looking for a whistle. Coach Applegate not happy. Salmons will drive to the bucket. Plus one. There's the crowd. That was a big play. Uh, a play like that can really change the momentum in the game. That's two on Jack Hurd. That's the second on Jack Hurd. He will check out here with 65 seconds to go in the first half. The South Gray faithful was looking for a, a reason to get loud there, and right. Connor Salmons gave it to him. Looking for his third point of the night with 65 seconds to go. Converts the and one. And then we got a foul. And it's on South Central? I think it's on Uhl. I think. If it is, it's his second. So that's going to now keep it on this end of the floor. It is on Gavin Uhl. So South Ray got a three-point play on a really good drive by Salmons. Coach Valeri is talking with one of the officials now. They will go to throw it in. Gavin, Wall, fires, no good. 
Dyke smartly there, didn't try to go too hard after the rebound. He wanted to, but would have been the third foul. Less than a minute remains. South Central now going to slow it down. A 12-point lead on the number one team in the state in their building. And no whistle there. Sam Moore to the corner. Dyke inside. No good. Gavin Wall saved it. Joey Dyke. No. Howell ripped the board away, and now it's up ahead to Ool. To the bucket. Good. I, I don't know how to describe that sequence, Coach. Well, South Bay had two great looks. Dyke out of control, no good. Joey frustrated. South Central with the last shot of the half. Prusa with eight will come outside. Jellison will drive inside to the bucket. Isaiah laid it in. Martin, three-quarter court. He's going to come up short. Wow. Well, it was a big sequence. Uh, South Gray had a three-point play. And a foul on South Central, so a chance for a five-point play. They missed that. South Central goes down and scores. South Gray missed a couple really good looks. And then South Central finished with a, a shot at the basket. And uh, that was a huge, huge uh, series of events. I was going to say, the, the end of that half was uh, wild to say the least. Yes. A 16-point uh, lead here for the number two team in the state in South Gray over Coach Applegate's number one squad in South Gray. 40 points have been hung up by Bud Valerius' squad. Coach Applegate, though, 785 wins on his career. You know he's coming back for more in the second half. That's Tim Ritzke. I'm Cameron Bernie. KCMC Sports is coming back after this. it's time to start winding down or maybe you can finally gear up either way 
What you need is the space to do it and the freedom to invest in what matters most. A place where you can find yourself all alone, but never lonely. Where staying busy is always optional, but knowing you are valued is not. Where quality health care is for friends, not clients, and access to the best broadband means less time traveling and more time connecting. More time to read stories, share stories, and continue to write your own, where you can know exactly what you want to do each day, or simply leave your plans up in the air. Somewhere to drink in the beauty of nature, share a cup of coffee with neighbors, and where breakfast isn't really about the food. Because out here, there's a sense of belonging that can't be explained so much as it can be felt, and strangers are just friends that you haven't met yet. So when you embrace all that our community has to offer, it returns the favor again and again. Kiowa County. Open spaces, open minds, and open for the best years of your life. You know, you hear that small businesses are the backbone of a community, but when it comes to doing business in Kiowa County, Small is not how we see the places we pick up the essentials, buy a gift, or take the family out to dinner. These places are here feeding us, dressing us, keeping us caffeinated, maintained, and entertained, making sure we are pampered, healthy, running and rolling, fixed up and growing. We know the people who own these local businesses, who put in the hard work and passion to ensure the business is here and open, these efforts no doubt create a better and stronger community because sometimes it's a convenience or luxury and others, it's a necessity. Either way, to have these options within our own community is appreciated. So when you own a small business in Kiowa County, there is nothing small about it. We are Kiowa County, Kansas. Open spaces, open minds, and open for business. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. It's halftime here in Montezuma, and it's the number two team in the state on top of South Gray in their building here in the first half. 40 to 24 is your score after the first half. It was 22 to 13 South Central. They win the second quarter 18 to 11, 19 points. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. One with a nine for Jack Hurd here tonight already in the first half for South Central. They've also had seven from Heath Howell, and then a few different guys have added four apiece for them. And then on the other side, South Gray, Gavin Walls, their leading scorer, 11 points tonight for him in the first half. A couple of big threes to keep him in, and it was an and one from Connor Salmons towards the end of the first half that, sent this, that tried to send the roof off this place, and then the whole sequence that I don't even know how to describe at the end of the second quarter. It's a 16 point lead here for South Central. Second half after this.
Tonight, we're showing our junior high kids how to produce volleyball. We're using Huddle Production Truck to do all of our switching. Our kids are running the cameras. They're learning different positions of cameras, as well as sitting down in the producer chair, learning how to switch those cameras, run the replay, add the graphics, and everything it takes to actually put on a high-level sports production, all with our junior high crew, all using Huddle Production Truck. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. The second half just getting started here in Montezuma. A 16-point lead for South Central here today. Inside, Dyke quickly to the basket. Joey's got the first bucket of the second half for South Gray here. Coach, that first half, a 16-point lead for South Central. What, what stood out to you the most? Uh, how aggressive they were on offense. That one fires, no good. Rebound, Sam Moore pulls it down. That and I think <clears throat> the weakness that they'd had uh, parts of this season. Dyke, jumper, no good. Uh, turning the ball over. They kind of solved that problem tonight. On Sarmiento over, and that's going to be a travel called on JT Prusa. So Sam Moore so, set to trigger it, and a little pressure coming here right. from South Central. I think it's just token pressure. Just something to maybe try to speed him up a little bit. Right. Dyke inside, Joey to the bucket, and good. Back to back baskets for the senior. He got in a little bit of foul trouble early in that. Yeah, had a lot to do with the outcome of the first half, too. Yes, very much so. So what you'd like to do if you're South Gray is get this down to about six at the end of the third quarter if you can. Sarmiento will give it over. Uhl coming downhill, spun back the other way, no good. And Gavin Wall pulls the rebound down. So the sophomore getting the start in the second half. We go inside, Salmon's lost it for a second, back to Dyke. Joey already has four in this half, give him six. And a timeout called by Coach Valerius, a 6-0 start for South Gray. He's got the crowd back in it. Well, <laughs> you can see the difference uh, when Dyke's on the bench and when he's on the floor. Yes. He's the ringleader. The rest of them uh, not only follow his lead, but also, uh, you know, his enthusiasm and, and uh, aggressiveness. The rest of them will pick it right up with him. He's, he's been really aggressive, taking the ball strong uh, to the goal. I think he was a little disappointed in uh, not only the team, but uh, his play in the first half. And uh, he's come out with some purpose here in the third yeah. quarter. Yeah, six straight, all six have been that first jumper you saw from outside and then everything after that has been right. going to the bucket. Right. Sarmiento will give it over now with Prusa. One at the back door cut wasn't there. 
Powell with it now. Heath inside to the basket, no good. Martin the board and now coach a chance here to make it single digits for the Rebels. Salmons to Dyke. He's been hot to start. Salmons with it, back to Wall. We'll hand it off here, Dominic Martin. Martin to the basket. South Gray is going downhill with a vengeance to start the second half. And would you believe me, Tim, if I told you that was the first points of the night for Dominic Martin? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, when you are a good perimeter shooter, you always want to make sure your first couple shots are really good shots. Or a backboard shot like that. Cool. They've switched now. Jack Hurd being guarded by Salmons. Sarmiento will spin. Fire, no good. Another well-defended shot by Sam Moore. Salmons will come up ahead, Martin. Dominic! That has sent the roof off. Yeah. That was long distance. That was way out there. If, if that shot would have gone in. <laughs> I'd have trimmed it to five. Right. So far, uh, South Central hadn't scored here in the second half in two minutes and ten seconds. Three minutes and ten seconds. Or, or yeah, three Yeah. You had to correct my math. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Moore got bumped. A lot of contact. No whistle. I'll tell you what, they're letting them play tonight, Coach. You know, and that's the, way, that's the way good teams want to play. As long as nobody gains an advantage. If they gain an advantage, that's a different deal. Sarmiento, Jamie, inside. Hangs in the air, no good. Rebound, Howell, the stick back. He's got nine. That was a big goal. Martin missed the three-point shot from long distance. South Central gets a two. From point blank. Right. Wall inside, rejected by Howell. He got it back, and then Gavin's going to shoot two. Good follow by Wall. <laughs> Gavin, 11 points in the first half for the sophomore that averages 15 a night. Rattled that one home. He's got 12. Now, South Gray would love to be, uh, you know, to get it down to six, five, somewhere like that, and then it's game on in the fourth quarter. Say so it was 16 at the end of the first half. It currently right. sits at nine with a chance to uh, trim it in half. Right. So halfway through the first spin, quarter, yeah. they've trimmed it half. Half, half of the third quarter, they cut the lead in half. Number one and two teams in the state. In class 1A Division I going at it here in Montezuma. Heard had 19 in the first half. I don't think he's taken a shot yet here in the second half. That one stolen away. Martin took it. Howell put it on the deck. And Dom will bring it up. He's cut off. He will throw it. And then stolen back away, and Sam Moore picks the foul up. And I don't think Sam liked that one. No. That's the first on Sam on his birthday. So for young players, when you take the ball down the sideline or the baseline, never pick your dribble up. Jellison to the basket. No good. A lot of contact. No whistle. And now Sam Moore will bring it ahead. Dominic Martin had its pocket picked. Sarmiento poked it free. Salmons ends up taking it back. Sam Moore to the corner. Martin. Dom. Martin will hand it off Dyke. Joey will cross. Rise, fire just a little bit short. Rebound pulled down by Jack Hurd. He's trapped, but he gets it out to Jellison. And Sarmiento will bring it up. Jamie just four points tonight. Hurd got the step on Salmons to the basket and good. He's got 21. You and just back to 10. how strong he is when he goes to the goal. Wall. Gavin, way downtown, no good. Rebound Sarmiento. Jamie will bring it up. 
South Central with a chance to extend the lead back out here. Ool. Inside, cut off. Stolen away, Joey took it. He'll outrace everybody the other way and lay it in. Joey's got 14, and he's got eight points here in the third quarter. Yeah, he had to set out a lot of the second quarter, and that's uh, just an example of how important uh, he is to South Bay's team. A full timeout taken here with a minute 58 to go in the third quarter and an eight-point lead for South Central. KCMC Sports is back. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. A minute 58 to go here in the third quarter and an eight point lead for South Central. It's been trimmed in half from halftime, coach. Yes, uh, for the most part, South Gray's gotten a lot better shots. So a minute 58 to go here in the third quarter. South Central basketball, Sarmiento to trigger it in. Gavin Wall tried to tried to steal one there, Coach. Well, he wanted to be the one that threw it in, give it back to South Gray. I think uh, for South Gray to really hit on all cylinders, uh, Martin's got to get going on uh, offense for South Gray. Howell will give it to Sarmiento. Jamie will step through up top, Prusa. That one deflected, Salmon stole it. Connor. Dumps it to Martin, caught it in the air, and finishes for Dom. They say they've got it to where we were talking about with a minute and a half left in the quarter. I say. Down to six. Now can they keep it there, or does South Central extend it back out? They've only scored four points in this third quarter. Inside, Howell strong to the rim. That was a good drive. Really good take right there. Salmons. Dyke was calling for it in the corner. Dominic Martin now over Dyke. He'll drive on Howell, got around him. Wow, what a finish. Howell's got the size advantage. Dyke used his quickness there. I say, and then so used the right six. hand to right. kind of come underneath right. him. That was impressive. He took the shot block away. He'll go back inside. Heath Howell, stolen away. Was looking for the foul, didn't get it. Martin thought about throwing it ahead, instead waved off Sam Moore, who's got it now. Sam to Dyke. Joey, three ball, bang! Oh, baby! Well, it's game on now. And you thought the crowd was in it before. Yeah. Here when they come. When you're playing on the road, the home crowd gets in it. You've got to figure out a way, how do we get our momentum back in the game? A two-for-one opportunity here for South Central. They hold the possession arrow. Sarmiento, Jamie, behind the back, to the corner. Prusa got it off and drilled it at the buzzer. How about that one, Coach? Well, that was accidental offense, <laughs> but it all, it all counts. So. It all counts the same. A six-point ball game will go to the fourth quarter. Oh, baby, we got a great one. The number one in two teams in the States. Back. Well, folks, he's been around for what feels like forever. That's Coach Mark Applegate back 
I believe that's in the 80s. He's been the only coach at South Gray since the two schools combined. He was at Montezuma as well. 785 wins for Coach Applegate. And that, that was back when, when you guys were starting, Coach, and was there peach baskets? Uh, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, the world was a lot different. The world was a lot simpler. I would no believe internet, that. no cell phones. Sarmiento, no good. Rebound tap to Howell. We'll give it over now, Gavin Uhl. Out of bounds, going to stay on this end of the floor. And uh, a big shot to end the uh, to end the third quarter. And now South Central with a two-for-one opportunity here. Howell inside, spins, brought it down, but it's going to be a tie-up. <laughs> Coach Applegate there didn't like that it, was a tr that it was a jump ball. He thought Howell traveled with yes. it. You know, Mark's had a terrific run at South Bay. And uh, schools are ties. When you get somebody the quality of Mark, you better make sure that you <laughs> hang on to him. 785 wins, four state titles, and he's got him as the number one team in the state again. Well, it's not luck, I can tell you that. You know, you got to have some luck to have talent, but he knows how to use it. Dyke fires. No good. Sam Moore the board, and that's going to be a tie-up. And that will give it back to South Central. Well, South Gray trimmed it down to the six points you All were right. talking about, Coach. It's game on. The, the issue now, if you're South Gray, as big a hole as you dug, you can't have many empty possessions. They held uh, South Central to just nine points in that third quarter. That one, Dyke took it. Sam Moore will look to race it ahead. Sam is going to be fouled by Jack Hurd. That's three of them on him. Yeah, you don't want one of your big guys uh, to get a foul in the backcourt. So he had he had 19 at the end of the first half. He's got 21 right now, just two points in that third quarter. Right. Well, South Central had 22 points in the first quarter, so yes. South Bay's playing a lot better. Dyke, the spin move. Wow. And he walks back down the floor clapping. Like you said, Coach, it's game on. That's going to be a foul on him. I believe that's the third on Joey. Yes. Is there the spin or rise? And, I mean, he has made some tough shots yeah. look not very tough. He's a tough shot maker. And South Central hasn't made it easy on him. He's had no. to make the tough ones. That's he hasn't right. had any, hardly anything easy. Sarmiento, that's going to be an over and back. Whoa. And that's the right call. I say he caught it with the, the one foot down on the front court side. And then when he stepped with that second foot coming down, was there the catch yep. and then the step. You established possession on the front court side. So South Gray maybe catches a break. Now the question becomes, what does Coach Applegate's squad do with it? That'll do. That's a pretty good answer, Will. That one thrown ahead. It's going to be out of bounds to South Gray. And Coach Valeri is pleading with his guys to slow down. Now, well, just what we talked about. When the home crowd gets into it, and, uh, you know, South Gray would have still been behind 16. The home crowd was not going to be into it. But when they cut the lead down to, to six, now. That's to give them the lead. No good. Sarmiento the rebound. It's going to be a dog fight now. I was going to say, this is, going to be, this is getting ready to turn into a heavyweight fight. No. Sarmiento got the switch. He's got the uh, much bigger wall on him. Couldn't use his quickness to get around him. Gets it outside to Prusa. Dumps it underneath. They switch back to put wall on Howell. Drop step to the bucket and he'll score. Wall hit the deck, he tried to take the charge, but no whistle. Dyke, quickly, Joey hangs in the air, scored it! Both guys hit the floor, and it's play on! Well, it's mano a mano now. 
How many rounds do you go in boxing, Coach? I don't even know, but we're, we're in overtime of a boxing match. Yeah. That's going to be a, a foul. Is that on Joey? If it is, it's his fourth. Yeah, well, it is. That's a big foul in the ballgame because uh, Dyke has carried him in the third quarter. He's yes. carried his team. He's willed them to get right back in the ballgame. He's got 25 tonight. Timeout. A timeout called uh, by, uh, by Coach Valerius here with uh, 5'10 to go in the fourth quarter. 51 to uh, 49 is uh, your score here. And uh, by the way, Coach, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but since 2006, there has been uh, 23 ball games played between these two boys' squads. South Gray's boys 21 and two. South Central has not beat them in the regular season since at least 2006, and that was as far back as I could find. Right. The, the two wins was a, a league title game in 2019 and then also in the Spa League in 2012. And well, when South Central was formed, uh, I was coaching the gals then, and uh, in the first year of South Central, they didn't win a game. Zero. Wow. The boys. And so that's kind of, you know, a rough start for a school. Howell will shoot a pair. I say, but when I was pulling those numbers up, it's like South Central's had some pretty good boys squads over the years. Yeah. But to, to have not lost a regular season to Coach Apple, at regular season game to Coach Applegate since before 2006. Right. The foul was on Wall. It's his third. Heath Howell knocks down the front end. both. He's got 15. And South Central just threw a jab back that connected. And now uh, South Gray, a dangerous pass, but it got to Martin. Sam Moore underneath. Dyke, that one might have been deflected. It was at least altered. Houle trapped in the corner, but got it out, and then they hit Howell in transition. Sam Moore trying to track it down. It's poked out of bounds by Sam. It will stay with South Central. You never want to throw the ball in the full court to your post player. <laughs> he wasn't even I said he wasn't even expecting it. It was no. lucky for South Central that he was even able to catch it. Lobbed in that one stolen away Dyke. Three on two for the Rebels. Joey, stop, pop, connect. Is there smart by Joey to jump stop, go yep. up, not with the four fouls, not risk smart. going to the basket. Smart move. He knows he's got four. And South Gray just threw a jab back. Yep. Here in a minute, they're going to turn into haymakers. Yep. It's who can carry the mail now for each team. Tell you what, the guy with the ball, not a bad option. 21 tonight for Jack Hurd. Rule with it. There is still a lot of basketball to be played. The atmosphere in here feels like it's win or die. Every possession, we are only halfway through the fourth quarter. And Gavin Wall just picked up his fourth. Yep, that's a big rebound. As Dyke on the block was uh, pretty close to picking up his fifth. Right. He took a big chance here trying to block that shot. Jack Hurd's got 22. He had 19 at the break. South Gray's defense has really turned up here in this fourth quarter, third right. and fourth quarter. Really, South Central had the momentum in the game the whole first half. South Gray's had the momentum the whole second half. One of two from the line. Still just a three-point ball game. Gavin Wall. Stop. Pop. In and out. No good. As there that time, South, uh, South Gray, uh, the offense never reversed the ball. Just came down in a shot. Probably yeah. not what Coach Applegate wanted. Prusa to the corner. Uhl will call for Howell to come over. Got Dyke in the air, steps through, but he missed it. And then he fouled. And that's his third. It's the third foul on South Central of this uh, quarter. 
That's maybe that one just too easy that time yeah. for Uhl. There's been tough well, shot after tough shot. Dykehead would just back away because he's got four fouls. You know, and he's, he's really carried them here in the second half. They cannot afford him to go to the bench. 322 remains in this heavyweight title fight. Dyke to tie it. No good. Salmons and Uhl tied up for the board. It'll keep it with the Rebels. Dyke had a good look. He squared up. Shot looked good. Martin. Gavin Wall to the corner. Sam Moore. No good. Powell will slow it down up ahead. Uhl thought about it. Decides not to take it. Will come to Heath Howell. And now Coach Valerius telling him to spread it out. Less than three minutes to go here in Montezuma. I'm Cameron Burney. That's Tim Ritzke. We got a great one, and it's all brought to you by MJE and United. If South Gray wins it, they win the league title. In the regular season, if South Central wins it, there's going to be a banner share. Sarmiento spins. Lost his balance. We'll kick it out. South Central here, Coach. I think they'd be content to run the last 225 off. Yeah, I, I think they're still spread out to score, though. And that's going to be an over and back. Yep. When you get out that far on the court, always the danger of doing that is you lose your offensive flow. Now, I think they were still trying to score. I think they were trying to get her isolated. Joey Dyke. Big, big possession here. Martin. Dominic. Way downtown, Martin. No good. Rebound, Sam Moore. Back up top, Martin over now, Salmons. Back to Martin. I would think Dyke's got to touch the ball in this position. Sam Moore will hand it to Dyke. Joey will split the defense. He stepped all the way through, and it rolled off. Had a good look. It was a good drive. South Central dodged the jab that time. Yeah. Prusa will give it to Jack Hurd. Salmon's on him. 90 seconds remain. Prusa. Lace them up tight, coach. 80 seconds to go. Sarmiento to the bucket. No good. Oh, guess who was right there for the stick back? That was a big basket. Jack Hurd. Big basket. 24 for the sophomore. South Gray's got a score. Sam Moore in a timeout called by Coach Applegate. And so the sophomore there with maybe the biggest stick back of the night so far for this uh, South Central squad. They led it by 16 at the end of the first half. South Gray trimmed it to nine at the end of the third quarter. And uh, Coach Valerius' squad with uh, just 65 seconds to go in his 14th year, won his 250th game earlier this year, number two in the state. And it, this team was third last year at State. He's got a pretty good group of guys. Yeah, he does. Uh, they play well together. They share the ball. Both teams do. Uh, you know, and we talked about this uh, in the Mead South Gray game. A lot of times these games just come down to who can make a couple more plays than the other team and who can make shots. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, both teams have made a pretty good share of them. Yeah, they have. South Central under Coach Valerius this year averages about 59 a night. They sit at 56. He told me maybe their biggest strength is their defense. They only give up 39 points a night on the year. They've had, In 10 games this year, 10 of their 17, they've held opponents to 40 points or less. Martin, way out there, no good. Heard the rebound, will give it to Prusa. JT. Looks to dribble it up, crosses over, ball's on the deck, it's loose. Gavin Wall came away with it. South Gray dodged a jab. Wall to the bucket, it's going to be. Oh, I thought that was getting ready to be offensive. Well, she called it both ways. Say so she put the hand behind the head to call the charge and then changed her mind. Is that all now? At the fourth on Jack Hurd and now two free throws for Gavin Wall. Money. 
That's a big one. Fourteen tonight for the sophomore. Averages fifteen a night on the year. Oh, we threw it off the front of the rim. I'm not sure. Right there. I say, why? Why do you do that? Uh, where you can cut it down to a one possession game. That's going to be a foul. If it's on Wall, it's his fifth. It is. So Gavin Wall fouls out, and now free throws coming here for uh, JT Prusa, a 65% free throw shooter on the year. And of the starters for South Central, he is it tied for the highest. Him and Jamie Sarmiento shoot it at 65%. So two for three, Coach Valerius would take a couple of them right now. Off of Mark front iron, no good. Four forty-four to go and a four-point lead for South Central. Make it five. Okay, this is a must possession for the South Grove. So they gotta have points. Sam Moore will go to the corner. That win free. No good, rebound Salmons, Martin will fire. No good, rebound Dyke, the stick back. Joey's got 29, it took three attempts, yeah. but they get a bucket. And South Grace come up with a few stops on the defensive end, but you gotta think South Central here, Coach, gonna be very uh, determined with what they do with the ball right. on this possession that not going to do anything that would jeopardize throwing one away. Yeah, uh, one thing you're telling your team in this huddle is that everybody has to come and meet every pass. No one-handed passes. Come and meet every pass. When you catch the ball, put it at your chin. Face your goal. Be strong with the ball. Uh, 29 seconds remain here in the fourth quarter. And again, I'm Cameron Bernie. This is uh, the legend, Tim Ritzke. Coach, this one's been a lot of fun. Two really good teams. Uh, both teams are well coached. Both teams have played extremely hard. And, I mean, it's 57 years <laughs> before. I mean. the, the number one and two teams right. in the state separated by one possession. I don't know how you get much closer. No, I don't either. Uh, you know, it's just great basketball. 29 from Joey Dyke tonight for South Gray. Jack Hurd's been right there. 24 tonight from him. The one thing you cannot allow here, South Gray, is the ball to go over your head. They will lob it in. They got it to Jack Hurd. We'll give it over Sarmiento. They will make Jamie dribble it across. Sam Moore poked it free, but it's a foul on him. And so now free throws coming for the point guard for South Central with a chance to give it a two-possession lead. Exactly five seconds ran off the clock on that possession. Oh, smart play. You're going for the steal if they don't call the foul. You know, great. If they do, that's what you needed to do anyway. Sarmiento, two free throws for Jamie. First one's nothing but nylon. He's only got five tonight, but that may be the biggest point for him tonight to make it a two-possession ball game. Right. Got them both. Calm, cool, and collected. That a uh, jab that connected to the jaw of South Gray. Sam Moore to the corner, back up top. Martin had everybody flying at him. 15 seconds to go. Martin has to force it up. No good. Rebound pulled down by Ool. He's going to be fouled, and with 8.6 seconds to go, that might be your knockout blow, Coach. You know, uh, I think school's out now. Wow. You know, the one thing I've, and to me, probably the, one of the main differences in the game, South Gray scoring is not nearly as balanced as it usually is tonight. And uh, it's just hard to put that much pressure on a couple scores. Free throw no good from Gavin Ool. So South Gray here, if they score, got to be an immediate timeout and then a foul. And, yeah. and there, there's a lot of hope going on for Coach Applegate right now. It's not necessarily over, but like you said, school, the, the bell's getting ready to right. ring. Right. Five for Gavin Ool. Sam Moore. We'll race it ahead. Sam blocked by Howell. Sarmiento pulls it down. He'll dribble it out. And South Central, the number two team in the state, knocks off South Gray at home on senior night. That was a good ball game. Uh, 
you know, odds are these two teams are going to play with a lot more on the line than just the league title uh, here in the next month. Yeah, so that's, that's a preview of what right. most likely is a sub-state title game. Right. I mean, it's the number one and two teams in the state. It's it can't be, but it's the equivalent of a state title game sure. that we just watched here in Montezuma. And and both teams learn from tonight's game. Now you hope you can learn being the winner. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it's not that way. Yeah. So you can't get discouraged. It's back to the drawing board. And okay, what do we need to what do we need to improve on? Yep. As Joey Dyke there embraces with it, Coach Valerius, and then him with his point guard. Coach, what? Any final thoughts? What stood out to you tonight? No, I, I think the biggest thing to me is just the, that, you know, South Central was a lot more aggressive in the first half, South Gray the second half. But South Gray just had some people that they usually depend on for scoring that they didn't get much out of tonight. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, that just puts way too much pressure on on you know the couple players that are scoring yeah joey dyke 29 gavin wall 14 and then after that four from dominic martin and max moore yeah so yeah. uh well coach the last couple of weeks have been fun i don't know if we'll get another one in or not before substate but we are going to pratt skyline and would would love to have yawn with us well hopefully uh you know at my age uh I don't buy green bananas anymore, <laughs> if that tells you anything. So uh, hopefully uh, that'll be possible, and uh, I think it'll be a great substate tournament. I think it's got the potential to be. So one final time here from Montezuma. Coach, thanks again. You're welcome. I had a good time. Uh, we've seen some really good basketball league tournament-wise, the rematch between Mead and South Gray, and, and then tonight. So you can't ask for much more than that. And, 1A basketball. I say I don't know how you get much better than the no. top two teams in the state going at it. So again, for the entire crew, that's Tim Ritzke. I'm Cameron Burney. The regular season league title was on the line here. I believe now it's going to be a banner share, but like Coach said, you learn from tonight, and it all carries forward for the next month or so. A 60-54 to win for South Central. Oh, what a ball game we had. It was a heavyweight fight. It was all brought to you by MJE and United. Thank you all for watching. I'm Cameron Burney. Good night.